yo, yo. This is the story about, <clears throat> I mean, it's your boy, Fo' Peasy. Look, hey, I just did one of them uh, Midnight Madness steps. Y'all go check that motherfucker out, you feel me? The P gang, look. On my Midnight Madness, I be talking about that weed shit, so y'all go check them motherfuckers out. Y'all need to like, comment, and subscribe. But today it's all up, I mean, tonight it's all up big, but you feel me? I got on the Z-Top with a little help real quick about <clears throat> when I had a, uh, First, I just start selling this one nigga. This A, but I'm gonna say A Ray, you know what I'm saying? But he's from somewhere over in Africa and shit, but Cuz was a, you know what I'm saying, cool ass nigga. It's just a, the certain little shit he did type shit, you feel me? But dude was a cool ass nigga, you know what I'm saying? Other than what he did, across the board. But, Pete Game, it's a story on this one nigga. I used to call him Holy Moly, you feel me? <laughs> but he's a, uh, you know what I'm saying, kind of like a, like I said, I don't know which part of the uh, country in Africa he's from, but he's from somewhere over in Africa and shit, you feel me? Yeah, it's the, yeah, but the big ass, you feel me, Jesse? This nigga had, uh, I was selling him weed and shit at first, right? And, Dude knew how to hustle. Like, I didn't know he knew how to, like, hustle that shit neither. You feel me? I'm thinking he just buying the shit just to buy the weed and shit from me. You feel me? <clears throat> but for real, come and turn out. Dude <coughs> really was fucking with me on the motherfucking, you know what I'm saying? Weed and he was selling that shit because he was uh, fucking with some niggas over there. Like, he was from the south side, I guess. Like, where he stayed at and shit. So he was fucking with motherfuckers from over in the south side. In the south side, Motherfuckers be getting money over there too. You feel me? So peep game. I'm from the AP area, which is just like West Side area. You feel me? So I was just now getting weed. Like we we did me and my cousin, my cousin uh, Quay, my cousin Burger, all of us. We was just now getting getting started on this weed and shit. You feel me? So these niggas, Burger. Cuz was getting some, you know what I'm saying, some fire gas, you feel me? <clears throat> some of that shit was coming from, from Florida, but some of that shit was, you feel me, other places, you feel me? So we just a little smoking shit. It was, we all, like, it was like maybe four or five of us, our cousins, all of us in this, our little group or whatever. We just going half and then getting bags and shit. So my little bag, I'm, I'm starting to sell this shit. I'm coming up, you feel me? Next, like, it's crazy that <laughs> a nigga fuck this little plug, <laughs> this little plug up because of what, uh, not even the plug of what, but basically what we had going in our little circle or whatever because a nigga was really getting like different kinds of weeds. It was some weeds a nigga was getting. And the, the shit was so good, we would want to be like, it was one of the some of the weeds you don't get burnt out on, you feel me? Like the weed and a nigga like really fuck with. And he like, I ain't gonna lie, I wish, I wish you got some more of that. I ain't got no more. Damn, I, a nigga might not see that shit again. Or you might not see it for another six to seven months type shit. Like it was, it was like that type of weed, you feel me, that we was getting. We was getting so many flavors. That's another reason that we was, we had a whole lot of uh, clients. Everybody had a whole lot of clientele on the shit. So, <clears throat> for real, we was probably some of the only niggas that was putting that shit through the city type shit. Like, that's how good that shit was. But I had met this nigga named Ho, like, that's what I call him, Holy Moly, you feel me? And I met this nigga, and he used to work at this little, one little place. And I would go up there to his job and shit, and knock him a little weed and shit. We got to, we got, we, me and him got too cool, like, real close to where we started, like, he started telling, asking me, God, won't come over his house, chill with him and shit, smoke mats and shit sometimes, and I'm like, for real, <clears throat> when I sell weed, I really don't like matching niggas unless I'm where I, I already got a blunt that I'm smoking type shit, you feel me? Other than that, I don't really like, really like, uh, taking weed out and selling you a blunt, then taking weed out and then matching you a blunt, I don't do all that. But it 
got to the point where sometimes that I wasn't doing nothing, I would go over and fuck with him and shit, real talk about him, you know what I'm saying, little business and shit. Got to, uh, you know what I'm saying, know him a little more cooler, because like I said, dude was a cool ass nigga, he knew a couple of my people and shit. He was a cool ass nigga. I always kind of looked out for a nigga and shit too, like on some small little shit, you feel me? Not nothing big, but some small shit. So, I had decided to put this nigga on, you feel me? On some, like, bring him in on some shit. My little circle, do you feel me? Not our little circle, but like my little circle or whatever. And when I had brought the nigga in, I ain't gonna lie, the nigga was making money and shit, you know what I'm saying? But when he started making, my father was trying to turn this motherfucker up. But when he started making, like, a lot of money, like, when this nigga started making, like, <clears throat> money, money to where, like, you know how shit go. Like, when a nigga really get cheese, cheese, sometimes niggas is humble and sometimes niggas don't humble themselves. This nigga was kind of humble, but at the same time, he was... He, he got too comfortable to where he was doing, like, little slick shit every now and again. And sometimes I let it slide, like, all right, whatever, all right, whatever. But it got to the point, I'm, like, getting tired of this shit. And then one time, he had owed me some money from when I had gave him one of them uh, blank bags and shit. And then the nigga kept prolonging shit. So finally, the nigga tells me to pull up to his crib and shit. And then when I'm going to pull up, the nigga calls me back and all that. Never bad. <laughs> He's ready to go somewhere real quick and he be right back. And then he'll, you know what I'm saying, I can pull back up type shit. And I'm like, what? Like, nigga, I had already made my way close to over here and shit. And now you didn't talk about you changed your mind. You ready to pull off and go somewhere else and do something else. And your motherfucking ass owe me money type shit. So I'm like, you feel me? What the fuck is this nigga on? So. <clears throat> I call my people, I'm telling this, you know what I'm saying, I'm telling cuz about it and shit, cuz after I did, I handled that little business where I was already in that area, I was ready to go pick up cuz. So I'm telling him about it, and cuz was like, man, 